So as we approach cold and flu season, I want to talk about illness, health, and a couple of factors at play. So first of all, what is illness? What is health? Health is, in, in the words of Samuel Hahnemann, a person, a human being functioning at their apex, living up to their highest calling in life, and doing what it is they're meant to do. The lofty goal, the total good potential on the planet. Okay, that's health. It's not merely the absence of disease or some kind of disease process, but rather functioning at your apex. That is the goal of health. Disease, basically, is imbalance. It is your whole rhythm and being being thrown off in some way, whether it be on a physical level, a mental emotional level, a spiritual level, that is all disease process. And therefore the goal is to get the balance back. Now, do you need a label to call it disease? Well, from a nature medic standpoint, not necessarily. You could be in a disease process without there being some kind of way that we describe things. Do the rest of the planet, do we call this whatever? No, we don't need that. We can still treat to help it shift the other direction. Okay, now, given that that is those are the distinct processes of disease and health, what is it, why is it that you can be riding the subway and the dude who has the influenza virus and coughs in a 10 foot radius on the people in that vicinity, vicinity, why is it that not all of them fall ill? You know, let's say 10 people are in that radius. Why is it that three, or four, or five fall ill, but the others don't? And sometimes it doesn't seem to have any kind of correlation with, wait, that person was closer, therefore they had a higher concentration of the respiratory droplets that landed on them, and they therefore were more likely to rub it on their nose. From an atriotic standpoint, that's only one component of the disease process, okay? So I'm going to call that the stressor component. It could be an external stressor. In this case, it's a pathogen the influenza virus, it could be a bacteria, but it could also be trauma. Whether it be physical, emotional, psychological trauma, all of these things can, can cause a stressor that can push us to disease. So that's, there is a virulence factor also associated with said stressors. So how strong, how robust is the disease itself, right? How likely is it to cause imbalance when it in interacts with their particular immune group. That is what's called the virulence factor. You have some things that will take you down and pretty much the majority of people, whoo, gonna hit them hard. That's when we have, say, an influenza that has a high virulence factor, meaning nine out of 10 people fall ill. Whoo, scary, okay? We have other sorts of things that are a little, they're pansy viruses, right? Doesn't take much to sort of fight them off, have your immune system a little bit in shape, you're good. Okay, virulence factor, strength of stressor. Second component of illness would be your own unique individual susceptibility to fall ill in a particular way. Now, this is influenced by many things. This is influenced by your genetics. I say influenced deliberately. It's not a done deal with genetics and don't think of genetics as this set in stone kind of thing. Genetics are influenceable. We turn on and off genes all the time in our bodies. You have twin studies where identical twins, same exact DNA makeup, and one falls ill with something but the other does not. So there's more than the genetic piece going on. That's just one component and it is influenceable. The second piece would be, you know, all the things that factor into our susceptibility piece, like, I'm, like I was saying. So for example, some families have a particular susceptibility to fall ill in a particular way. Um, you know these families, right? Let's say um, they have a tendency for stuff to happen, like they get cavities easily. Um, you have a susceptibility in that particular way. Doesn't matter. Other influencers don't really change that so much. That's a unique susceptibility. You have some people, it doesn't matter what it is, it lands in their lungs. That is their susceptibility. To, to compare it to Greek mythology, think of Achilles, right? Achilles in the story, is dipped in whatever it is he's dipped in, some kind of immortality stew, potion, whatever, maybe he drops everything. 
and they hold him by his Achilles heel, right? So everything gets coded with this like, oh my God, thank God. Unless, unless someone hits your unique susceptibility of your Achilles. That is the component of illness that has to do with the other piece, right? You gotta hit him in the heel, in the Achilles heel specifically, to kill him. Perfect picture of susceptibility from a unique setup standpoint. There are two components, right? The stressor, the arrow, or whatever it is that has to shoot Achilles, and the susceptibility in the heel. You hit him in another spot, it's not gonna hurt him. There you have it. So that's a nice picture of the two. Keep that in mind and remember, you know, nutrition, diet, exercise, whether or not you smoke, all these things can affect your susceptibility. That can be influenced. We can treat on the susceptibility level as we can treat on the other level. So the two factors for falling ill, know what they are, and we will talk next time about how to avoid and how to influence the said factors. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your subscriptions, your thumbs up, your shares. Love it all. Um, tell me what you think. Adios.